Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In my last video regarding potential plans for Dynasty Warriors 10, I briefly mentioned how Koei Tecmo doesn't adhere nor cater to their disgruntled Dynasty Warriors fanbase, who at least in my case, find themselves living off the coattails and glory days of older Dynasty Warriors games. Everywhere you look these days, you see cash grabs for dated or recycled ideas, both in film and gaming. I'm talking about productions that were wildly successful back in their day, and then years and years pass and a new studio or company comes along and revamps the original idea entirely. This could be due to licensing changes for products themselves, or rights to the original IPs being acquired or transferred. As a Dynasty Warriors fan who grew up playing these games on the early PS2 in the early 2000s, it's that oh so cozy sense of feeling left out when it comes to this modern trend of remakes. In this video, we will take a look at the classic Dynasty Warriors games on the 6th gen consoles of gaming. How would these classics stack up with a modern release, and more importantly, what would a rework of the older Dynasty Warriors games look like, if given the chance to restore their former glory? But to be honest, I spend way too much money on Koei games regardless if they're even that good to begin with. Especially when you consider all the paywalls and separate add-ons Koei has behind their games, whether it be Ultimate or Definitive Editions, Empire's releases, or even Extreme Legend versions. Anyway, it's also not because I don't appreciate the new avenues Koei might be exploring as a company moving forward, or what that means for newer fans alike. It's possible classic fans like me feel left out because bringing back old games seems to be a familiar trend in the gaming industry today. Understand I don't think this is a bad trend for the industry itself. If it keeps you profitable and competitive and you're giving you consumer quality products then so be it. I just hope it's not due to a lack of creativity and imagination among studios, especially with all the technology and innovation we have at our disposal in today's modern digital age. A lot of these classic games and ideas benefit from being brought back from the past in some form or fashion. Koei fits into this category already with the recent news of Romance of the Three Kingdoms 8 remake set to be released later this year in 2024. The Warriors games we do have modernized are Dynasty Warriors 7 Extreme Legends Definitive Edition, which is a PC-only port of course, and Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Definitive Edition, which were honestly great adaptations to modern hardware, but what about the 6th gen era of Dynasty Warriors games? For this segment, we're taking it back to the year 2000. The launch of the PS2 was at hand and Koei released Dynasty Warriors 2, the first Warriors game released on the PS2. The game sold pretty well for its time, and would go on to lay the foundation for the ensuing releases of Dynasty Warriors 3, 4, and 5. These titles would transcend the series to new heights that Koei Tecmo has yet to replicate to this day, in terms of overall success at least, for a mainline Warriors game. Dynasty Warriors 3 topped the charts at 1 million sales during its release in 2001, just one year after the release of Dynasty Warriors 2. This entry came with upgraded mechanics to combat and combos a revamped 5-tier weapon system that involved requirements to hunting them down on a harder difficulty, 14 additional characters, straight banger OST, and an absolute stellar class of English voice actors. Useless! Useless! You flaming idiot! Take this! Feel the power of my magic! It was the first Dynasty Warriors game to reach those heights for the team at Koei and Omega Force Productions. Dynasty Warriors 3 was also the first in the series to get an Xbox original release. These users didn't get the Extreme Legends versions, however, but I'm sure Koei thought they hit the jackpot with Dynasty Warriors 3 based on success and sales alone. But in 2003, Koei struck gold with the ensuing release of Dynasty Warriors 4 on the PS2 and Xbox original adding three more characters, a progressive weapon system, and overall darker tones and art style and cell shade, and even added a one verse one dueling system that greatly affected battle morale for either side and much more. Completely shattering Dynasty Warriors 3 numbers in terms of sales with a whopping 1 million in its first nine days. 
Dynasty Warriors 4 would go on to sell roughly $2.2 million in its lifetime, and to this day is the greatest selling mainline Dynasty Warriors game of all time. But Koei didn't stop there. They would welcome the release of Dynasty Warriors 5 for the PS2 and Xbox original once again in 2005 to complete the trifecta of back-to-back-to-back million-dollar releases, which is quite impressive for early 2000s standards. I mentioned paywalls being a big part of Koei games earlier. Adding a little bit of context to that, to each of the three games mentioned, both having Extreme Legends and Empires adaptations, except for Dynasty Warriors 3, who did not get an Empires release. These adaptations are the modern day equivalent to DLC, if you will. They were sold separately as standalone disc with additional content, mainly in the form of costumes, weapons, and mainly game modes. So technically, the complete Dynasty Warriors experience for these games is only accessed when you have the saved data from the base game on your PS2 memory card, which was detected when inserting the Extreme Legends disc into your PS2 and a good old-fashioned disc swap prompt would appear. And this would have to happen every time you booted up the game in order to access the content fully. In 2005, the lifespan of the PS2 was slowing down. Sony and Microsoft alike were eager to take the gaming market by storm and developers alike had their eyes set on the 7th gen consoles. The future was bright for Koei, right? Right? Well, that's until Koei decided to completely change focus with the previous four installments with the release of Dynasty Warrior 6, a game that ultimately sold well in Japan on the PS3, but only selling a mere 22,000 copies on the 360 at launch. Uh, remember when Microsoft tried to conquer Japan with the Xbox 360? Uh, more on that in a bit. It also didn't help Koei's case for the next-gen Dynasty Warriors games. When their consumer base was focused on upgrading to the next best thing in terms of consoles, yet Dynasty Warriors 6 happened to get a PS2 release that had more content than the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of the same game. Chris Guildhart brought this to my attention a while back. Be sure to check out his channel if you haven't already. It was termed Dynasty Warrior 6 Special in Japan, or Shinsenzoku Muso 5 Special. But the West got Dynasty Warrior 6 on PS2. That's it. No distinction from the additional content that was present on the PS2, which featured five additional stories for certain characters that were only playable in free mode on the 7th gen consoles. Though 6 was a decent entry to the series, it certainly stirred some controversy amongst conventional Dynasty Warriors fans on the PS2 era, mainly due to the implementation of the Rinbu system a combat mechanic that looped chain attacks in sequence without the need or use of combos, drawing away from the combined normal and charge attacks that could be used in sequence with each other from the previous games. This was a step back for the series considering Koei abandoned the Rimbu system when they implemented Dynasty Warriors 7, which was more of the traditional chain attacks and combos that were found in Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8. 7 and 8 was something that fans appreciated with both of their Extreme Legends adaptations and, of course, their Empires, and I think the fans, in like of what they were looking for in a Dynasty Warriors game, found that consistent. I do also realize that Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper got a PC port in its day, but technically it never got a digital release. In turn, the Hyper Edition has been unjustly scalped on the internet due to limited releases of the physical copy. That's right, slap that CD-ROM in your Windows 5 OS and turn and burn, baby. Now that we got that odd bit of history and background of these games out of the way, let's go more in depth to what a Dynasty Warriors Classic Collection could look like. Considering Dynasty Warriors 3, 4, and 5 all had Extreme Legend expansions on the PS2, it makes sense that these add-on games would also be bundled into each game respectively. Extreme Legends was a definitive way to play these games back in the day, and frankly would add more replayability with a modern release. This allows the game to be loaded with its XL counterpart, making all modes playable from the beginning and ready to play like they should have always been from the jump. This alone is reason for fans to buy this collection of games, seeing as not everyone got the base game or the XL games together back on the PS2 days, or much less the Xbox fans, who didn't even get the Extreme Legends games at all on the original Xbox. This would open up the community to revive discussions regarding weapon and item hunting. I don't see them doing this, okay, as a disclaimer, but tweaking requirements ever so slightly could be a good thing, since some of the weapon and item requirements can be really difficult to achieve. 
in the case for a classic collection of Dynasty Warriors games bundled into one, it's unrealistic for these changes to happen for any of the games, with the exception of the directional lock when it comes to fighting and initiating combos. That should be an easy fix, I would think. But as we see time and time again, gaming companies are just tending to get lazier and lazier with capitalizing on opportunistic and innovative ideas as opposed to delivering customer satisfaction upon release. I know you can't please everyone, right? Especially in today's modern era where criticism spreads like wildfire online. That's also not to negate the fact that some companies do a really good job and care about their product at launch and continue to provide solid upkeep even after release. A lot of these topics we're discussing for a classic Dynasty Warriors game have already been solved and are all over YouTube, so I'm going to address the elephant in the room. I understand these games can already be emulated on PC, and can even add texture shading, 1440 resolution, mods, cheats, and the like, but not everyone has the means of emulating their games, has a PC, or can even extract the ISOs from their legally obtained ROMs, and for those who do own a PC and use the practice, I think you know what I'm talking about. Oh, without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. With that, I know this video is a stretch in expectation, and ultimately expecting Koei Tecmo to remake these games is unlikely. But I carry a sliver of hope, still, for some reason. Mainly because I try to remain positive in a negative viewed world, but quite frankly, I honestly just enjoy the ideas and discussions you all bring to the comment section. Like I've said before, it keeps the community active and discussion brings us closer than we think. Regardless of opposing viewpoints, the Dynasty Warriors community is a strong-willed one. Enduring some of the past releases and spin-offs tend to puzzle the likes of most of us. Some really enjoy the lesser known or talked about titles. I believe gaming, like I've mentioned before in my previous videos, is a personal preference and just because you don't like something about a particular game doesn't mean others shouldn't like it too. Gaming experience in general is relative. I know this because I find myself still playing 20 year old games. Maybe I have a chokehold grip on nostalgia, I don't know. But to me, with Dynasty Warriors, it felt like the sky was the limit for where the series could go and what it could be. After the success of the Million Dollar Trilogy in the early 2000s, the fact that Koei has essentially been cloning characters and making everyone the same since has uh, always felt like a step back in a creative sense to me. Maybe that approach connects better to a larger modern crowd, but... Uh, Maybe there's just less quality games now than there was on the PS2, but you didn't hear that from me. In conclusion, I believe there's still viable ways to play these games in a modern setting. Thankfully, there's a huge community for game preservation. PCSX2, NetherSX2, RetroArch have been a saving grace for gamers who have means for emulation. For those still on the PS2 hardware, means of HDMI conversion cables, although viable, may not suit emulation or retro trink standards visually, but are a cost-effective way to play games that are just quite frankly stuck on the PS2. The PS2 community is still active and we must rely on the means that we have currently and limit our trust in modern companies preserving their game classics. Thankfully, there's a huge community for game preservation. Companies will abandon their past for a more profitable future. We see it all too often. But that doesn't mean you have to. With digital gaming growing and the realness of not owning physical copies looms over us, I can only pray for what the future holds in actually owning what you pay for. Thankfully, websites like Retro Achievements, who just added some updates to some Dynasty Warriors games via PCSX2 or RetroArts, and other true open source simulators out there who aren't seeking a profit due to being sued, are the backbone for game preservation, as far as we know. For those of you who do partake in that preservation and are keeping the community active with patches and feedback, or just quality assurance in general, thank you. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Uh, it goes further than you know. With all that being said, let me know what you want to see reworked with the modern release. Can we expect Koei Tecmo to reimagine a game that's from the PS2 era? But let me know in the comments. 
I greatly appreciate your time, as always, in watching this take on the older Dynasty Warriors games in general. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.